Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the beautiful Ava Fay. Ava, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? I am doing very well. Very excited to have you here. Yay, but I'm happy to be about... here. Don't mind yeah, my absolutely. dog in the background. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally fine. Uh, we love good boys and good girls around here, too. So, okay. <laughs> um, before we talk about why you're here, though, I would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, yeah. You're a passionate horror movie enthusiast, um, a particular love for films like Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and The Cell, which awesome. Not enough yes. people talk about The Cell. Uh, dude, it's um, so underrated. Like, people don't understand how good yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, it's such Art a good movie. And everything in it, like, it's just, like, my vibe. I love it so much. Yeah. Again, not enough people talk about that film. So that's mm -hmm. another one that I'm very excited that you brought up here. Um, but their fascination with the genre extends to their own creative pursuits. Uh, they enjoy acting in indie slasher films. Uh, coming up, Only Fangs, which I'm super, super excited about. It has such a dope cast to it. So obviously, spoiler free, can you tell us a little bit what we can expect from Only Fangs? Um, so Only Fangs is going to be a vamp movie, obviously. Um, I'm more like a ni 90s vibe, you know, um, uh, the, uh, the Lost Boys, um, from Dust Till Dawn, like, we're going more towards that vibe, like, sexy vampires. Um, I don't like to give too much detail on the movie. I just want people to watch it. Or you guys can even go to the Indiegogo and watch the, uh, the, uh, pre preview we have for it. Um, yeah. I'm very excited for this because it's more of like my vibe. <laughs> um, I'm right. definitely like into like the more dark and mysterious baddie stuff. So I'm very excited for it. Um, yeah, it's just a group of vampires um, end up turning cus pe our victims into customers. And there's a monster hunter who wants to help us out a bit. And um, yeah, we move on from there. <laughs> well, the best thing about it, guys, is if you want to, donate to the indiegogo if you want to follow them on social media i have all those links down in the description so you we're don't so have to close go too we're so yeah. close <laughs> yes so make sure you're doing that and make sure you're following ava on social media as well as the only fangs gang because like i said this is a huge cast with a lot of indie darlings in it that i'm super excited about and more so coming for sure. yes and i was just gonna say and they're not done yet there's still mm -hmm. a lot more they have coming up so um and also, though, you are a bartender um, yes. and you love arts, playing video games. So yes. um, you, you have the house alone to yourself for one night. What's your go-to video game? Um, well, I'm kind of playing multiple right now. <laughs> so <laughs> it's very hard because for me to have like one specific one that I like to play because I play multiple. I get in a mood like it goes from The Sims to freaking, you know, Call of Duty and stuff right. like that. It just varies on how I'm feeling. Um Right now, I've been playing Pal World. <laughs> it's a Pokemon with guns, pretty much, which is yeah. absolutely addicting. And it's still just the um, just the pre-release or whatever it is. So they're um, it's not even out completely. And I've already put like two hundred hours on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I love about it though is the passion that you have that comes along with it, because. Um... You know, I, I I want more time to play. I just don't have much time mm -hmm. to game anymore. And I, I, miss I it grew like up with video games. It was kind of like my escape, uh, especially with the life I was raised in and stuff like that. Video games are really a, a big thing for me. And then my mom always supported that, too, because I just I loved them so much. Like I've played I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. Um, I really like the originals more than the new ones, even though some of the new ones are actually pretty good, like. Right now, I'm playing the Origins. Um, I'm getting through that one just to play. Because I like to play them still to play them because the storyline. I still like the storyline. But the first beginning ones are still, for story-wise, I like a lot. I know that people hate the gameplay and, like, how glitchy it is. But I'm like, it came out in, like, 20, 2000 and whatever, you know? Right. Of course, it would be glitchy. But um, definitely into that. And then um, Resident Evil and Silent Hill is my eyes are watering because of my makeup. <laughs> um Resident Evil and Silent Hill I grew up on like that those were like my games I would watch my mom play and then once when I was old enough then I would play it and so it's it just went down the line <laughs> my mom was a big gamer as well <laughs> that's awesome that's really cool yeah. and you know to pass these things down and to be able to still do them like that's mm -hmm. really really cool you know to go back yeah. and play 
the old Silent Hill game and try to figure out that goddamn piano part in the school. Drives me I nuts. actually just got an emulator uh, from TikTok, and they have PS1 games on there and Silent Hill's on there. So I thought about, yeah. like, replaying it because, like, I know, like, my young self never beat it. And there's so much lore and stuff into that game that I like now that I'm the age to understand it. I want to go through it again and follow it all. Right. See, and I'm right there with you. Cause I remember getting stuck on that piano in the school and I never yep. finished it, but I want to go back and do that too. I so. can't stand the little kids with the knives. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, even at a young age, you know, playing horror games and, you know, getting into horror that way. Mm -hmm. and that's, the perfect segue into why we're here you know we mm -hmm. talked about some of the things that you were into but now i want to go back to the past ava and talk yeah. about what it was that got you started in the horror genre your first oh, horror movie okay. and well, ava the first horror movie you watched was my mom was a big movie enthusiast so from what i remember at least the one that impacted me the most when i was little was puppet master like i and i love that movie like i that's still like it's a favorite movie but also traumatized me <laughs> right <laughs> You know, like I love the animation and like the stop motion, all of that. And oh, I get goosebumps right now just talking about it. Oh, yeah. And it, it holds up so well. Obviously, there's mm -hmm. with a big franchise like Puppet Master, yeah, you know, they back in the day were so sick. Like, yeah, <laughs> like with the stop motion and everything, like I love stop motion horror. It just makes it like even more like creepy. <laughs> And this is a sexy movie. Like, yeah. I think people forget, you know, or the people that haven't seen it, like, oh, it's puppets. Like, it's actually a lot of sexiness in this movie. Yeah, there's, so. yeah, just like the one with the leeches when they're yes. like, dang, and like, bleh. <laughs> uh, talk about traumatizing. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen it? Gosh, I don't know. Bro. When did it come out? It was like uh, 80s, right? Yeah. But also The Gate was also really good, too. That one traumatized me, too. Um, I would say, gosh, at least for my little brain to actually remember, I would probably be like eight or nine. Right. Eight or Still nine. very young age to be watching. I, I've awesome. been around horror movies my entire life. I grew up on South Park. I grew up with like, <laughs> I'm, I'm all, let me watch everything. <laughs> See, and I've always said like, if you do that and you get educated to go along with it, it really helps mm -hmm. you to be more grounded in reality because you learn. I mean, the as a kid, Courage the Cowardly Dog was my favorite scary cartoon, you know, like. <laughs> Love Courage. <laughs> yes, always. So Puppet Master, like I said, still a movie that holds up today. And, mm -hmm. you know, Charles Band and. Uh, full moon they're still doing all these amazing things today mm -hmm. but that movie is still one that oh, stands the test of time yep. to me uh, do you still, remember which yeah, it was that, that affected you the most the like the scariest part so one puppet that i like absolutely hate and i can't stand is the drill head like <laughs> the drill head one he gives yeah. me such the biggest creeps and there's like a part that i remember of him peeping around the corner of the hallway and then he starts going down the hallway which is crazy like how are these puppets gonna chase you you're like 10 times bigger than these things and they're gonna, you know <laughs> but all i remember is him coming down the hallway and i was like he's so creepy like yeah this this big old drill head and he's so like pale and yeah that that part for some reason like really stuck with me i don't know why it's just him walking down the hallway <laughs> And it's, it's like I said, like when you see him, uh, mm -hmm. that's one thing I love about this movie still is the attention to detail that every single puppet yes. gets involved. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't skimp on any of them. We were talking about it earlier, but the first time you see the leech lady put that leech yes. in the mouth. Yes, that's like that my favorite part. Me up as a kid, man. <laughs> well, see, and how it's coming out of her mouth too, like how they made it like, yeah. And I was just going to ask you what your favorite moment from the film is. Would you say that that's, that's it? That is. That's like my favorite. That I love that puppet, the female puppet, and then so her just having the leeches suck the life out of these people. I was like, I love that. That <laughs> as a kid, that scene scared me I so know. bad. <laughs> so like I had this unreasonable too. fear of, of yeah. that scene. Like <laughs> between that and Stand by Me, leeches fucked yes. me up. Oh as a my kid. god! Oh, oh god! <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, man. <laughs> Or kids, like kids is really messed up too. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Fuck. That no. movie, we wa we tried watching that again a couple years ago. Because I watched it as a kid. I, I watched it as a kid fully... too. And I just know that it's really like fucked up. <laughs> so I, I couldn't even know. finish it. And, like as an yeah. adult, like I couldn't even yeah. finish the film. Like yeah. 
it's such and a it's disturbing, such a good disturbing movie, movie too. Movie. Like it's it's so yeah. It some movies be like that too good to where you can't even watch. Yeah, it's so it's so realistic and things that happen. I feel like it holds up even more today. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh one hundred percent. Yeah, it's just like I, you know, mm-hmm. as, I got which would be year like old. a perfect movie for people to like rewatch now these days to like maybe snap them out of it. But yeah. Like I said, I, I got a 15 year old, so watching it made me extremely uncomfortable. There's a huge yeah. difference between watching kids as a kid yeah. and kids yes. as an adult with kids. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, totally different. It's yeah. so like like different mindset for sure when you watch the movie. That's yeah. yeah. Well, Puppet Master is part of a bigger franchise. You know, there's mm-hmm. so many different movies in this franchise yeah, now. They so have, we do what, a they, franchise I think they have stuff. like four or five of them, right? Puppet Masters. I, I think I they're up to like having the set. I remember having the set. I know there's at least three. I think they're up to like nine now, honestly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I just got the Blu-ray box set when I did the uh, Full Moon Features uh, streaming service. You got a free mm-hmm. box set of it. And I'll have to get back to you, but I'm pretty sure it's up to nine. I was actually going to ask, which yeah. one is your favorite in this franchise? I don't even, it's been so long since I've watched it. I don't even remember what order they're in. I just know that there's a ton of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And th- like I said, these movies, you know, they're still pumping them out today, but mm-hmm. whenever we talk about a movie that hasn't had the remake treatment, because remakes, requels, sequels, kind of all the rage in Hollywood right now, would you like to see them try to attempt a Puppet Master remake today? Honestly, because, like, it didn't really matter on the actors and stuff. It was more focused on the puppets. Like, I feel like as long as they had the puppets correct, they could right. continue that story, you know, because they're... They're pretty much like voodoo, you know, creatures. Yeah. So they don't Just ever no talk. CGI, please. Yeah, no, I know. Can we do stop motion? I think still stop motion would be solid. Right. CGI not necessary. Like I, I'm a bit. That's why, I like, I that's that's why I'm stoked on the Beetlejuice because they're doing stop motion. Yeah, they're not doing CGI. I'm like, yay! You guys are keeping it like that. Good. Same thing with the new Alien film. Fede Alvarez. Said oh, it's nice. Practical. Good. So, very that. excited to see that one too. So. You know, we talked about your first horror movie being Puppet mm-hmm. Master and what that mm-hmm. means to you. But I do want to throw a little bit of a curveball at you here for a second. Mm-hmm. My little buddy Ghostface is here, and mm-hmm. he has a question for you. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite scary movie, Ava? <laughs> uh, what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Of all time? Oh, man, that's so hard because I watched so many. Um, I would have to think about that one. Let me see. On my mind, I would honestly say probably The Cell. I would yeah. I would say the cell is probably my favorite because that's always the one that I always talk about and like I always try to get people to watch because it's just so good and such a good like mind fuck, you know, like yeah. and the colors and I just really like dark art and stuff like that. So it just totally feeds my soul every time I watch it. And like I feel like every time I watch it, you find a new like something of being like, Oh, I missed that, you know? Yes. And I think that's an important part of watching horror films is you can always go mm-hmm. back and rewatch them and pick up on things mm-hmm. you missed the first couple times around. Yeah. So um, I probably won't rewatch The Ring and Signs though because I'm so traumatized from that shit. <laughs> yes, which is so funny because I have so many people tell me about how uh, The Ring affected them so much, and I don't and- understand why. But I like Japanese horror is a whole another level of terror. Like one hundred. What I think is like, funny about that, I, mm-hmm. I think I love it. I love it mm-hmm. because oh no, me too. But it's what? more spiritual, more more ghosts, more like yeah. I don't know. I had a little believe in shit like that, so I feel like that's why it's more effective yeah. because it's like hurt souls and hauntings and stuff like and lore. Like they base yeah. a lot of their horror stories, uh, horror movies off of lore, Japanese lore, Chinese lore, all of that, which is very interesting to me. Like I always like to know about all of that. Right. And we we forget the ring is PG thirteen, like oh. that movie shows you don't need an R rating to scare <laughs> people. I'm scared of a PG thirteen movie. <laughs> I think it's one of the scariest PG thirteen movies of all time. One hundred percent. You know, I and the up, grudge, like, oh. the ring, the grudge, the the. Oh, oh yeah. God. <laughs> I can't so, take it. Yeah. <laughs> I've had an amazing time talking about your first horror movie, your favorite horror movie. And um, before I let you go, though, we always bounce yes. back to the same question. We're yes. going to go back to Puppet Master. Mm-hmm. And what we're going to do is rank this movie on a skull count. Now, Ava, we're not ranking this movie on acting, production, score, mm-hmm. direction, nothing like that. We're not being critics. Mm-hmm. What we're doing here is strictly ranking this movie on how much it affected you on your first viewing. Oh, so, 10. 
100 like i still like i'm still slightly traumatized by a few scenes right. in that movie like 100 <laughs> percent. that's perfect i love that so yeah um, i, I remember that it. movie still so well and i'm 30 years old and i've seen that when i was like eight or nine <laughs> <laughs> right so. well, and it, it's one of those things where guys i know that i said it at the beginning but um we're at the end of the third act now the credits are about to roll and the curtain's about to drop but before that happens i have all of their social media links down in the description so make sure you're following ava make sure if you can you can donate to the only fangs because it's really going to help out that indiegogo oh, campaign if we you are guys so close to, to our goal <laughs> yes and uh follow the only fangs people as well because like i said huge cast more to come, and it's going to be a very fun movie. So, um, Ava, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Yeah. Um, everybody else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps to build the channel more than you know. And follow Such Hammer Horror on social media. Our links That's are in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.